Hello, welcome back. My name is Yenja and I'm a memory champion and polyglot. Yenja Wintersoul is a grand master of memory. But you probably already knew that if you're subscribed. So if you're not, please subscribe to see more of these videos and help me pay my bills. So by the end of this video, I want you to have some real tools, some real habit suggestions to have a better memory so that you can make 2021 the most memorable year yet. Already it's quite a memorable year, but how do we make it memorable in a positive way and how do we get better at remembering without doing memory training. Well, here are some habit suggestions. This video is heavily inspired by a blog post I saw by Kathy Chen, who runs Mullen Memory, called New Year's Resolutions for a Better Memory. I agree with the three suggestions that they have, but I'm also going to add some questions and comments as well as what my biggest New Year's resolution for 2021 is. So the first suggestion is to pomo more, multitask less. What does that mean? Pomodoro technique, as we've discussed in previous videos, is the idea that we focus on one task at a time for about 25 minutes or 50 if we want to be super focused, and then we take a little bit of a break. So we don't multitask, we don't try to do lots of different things in one go, but we just focus on the one task for 25 minutes at a time. And I really love this advice because I think we fool ourselves into thinking that multitasking is productive or that we are getting more things done by doing lots of things at the same time, but studies show that we are actually just switching gears really fast in our minds without actually giving our full attention to the task at hand. And the biggest thing you can do for your memory is to always be very focused on what you're doing right now. So that is the first suggestion, pomo more, multitask less. The second suggestion is to move more and exercise without digital input. I recently did my first Twitch stream, which was super fun, and a lot of people fought me on the fact that I believe that exercise is one of the best things that you can do for your memory. Now, let me give it to you straight. The people I know who have won the World Memory Championships and the US Championships, 95% of them exercise. You might have seen Nelson Dellis. He definitely exercises. But we also want to practice tying in the first suggestion of not multitasking with the second suggestion of moving more by exercising without digital input. Now, if you don't have an established exercise routine, I get it, you probably need to watch a yoga clip or follow along some instruction, but if you have an established exercise habit, try to do it without digital input because we also feel like we're learning so much more when we're exercising and learning something at the same time, right? Because we just wanna cram as much productivity into our lives as possible, at least some of us do. But the truth is that your brain needs to process and think about nothing sometimes. I used to climb mountains and do these very long hikes and my favorite thing about that was that at some point I run out of data or my phone dies because it's too cold on that mountain and I have nothing but just the steps in front of me. And it's wonderful because your brain needs a bit of a respite. Now that I'm back into memory training, I'm realizing that the more input I have from, let's say, Twitter, the more I kind of have little glimpses of information that I don't really need to be privy to while I'm memory training, causing me to be more distracted and showing me that I'm actually having too much input without enough output and without enough downtime. To give you a very fancy example, some of my friends have been invited to hang out with Richard Branson on his island and every time they ask how can we improve our memories, how can we do more at work, his number one suggestion is always exercise. So yeah. The third suggestion is to read more and less blue light before bedtime. And I love this. I love reading so much that I'm a little bit skeptical of speed reading, but I'm going to maybe try it this year. I love reading for many, many reasons, but reading more actually increases your ability to remember. But blue light also inhibits your sleep. Blue light, meaning a screen that is emitting blue light into your eye globes, is going to have negative effects on your sleep and sleep, as we have already talked about a thousand times in every single one of my videos, I feel like, is one of the most important things you can do for memory is to have quality and quantity of good sleep. And when I say read more, I don't just mean seven habits of highly effective memory champions or something like that. I also believe that reading fiction really clarifies your thoughts because you start thinking in those more analytical, in the tone of voice of the fictional characters. And this year I've accidentally read four books and two of those books were more narrative style and it really helped me process what I was going through, what I am going through in a more distanced way 
So then I feel like there is a framework, a tone of voice to structure my thoughts in. Now, how can we minimize the amount of blue light? You can use an e-reader or you can actually customize your phone or computer to have more of an orange hue so that it is more dental on your eyes. But I would suggest honestly not having so much digital input right before sleep anyway. So instead of trying to tweak your phone or tablet or computer to emit less blue light, I would just suggest reading more before bed because I also think when you're reading fiction especially, it is easier to get into that imaginative mindset that is required to get into REM sleep. Now let's talk about what I would like to add on to that. Previously, I've been very goal oriented and it is great, but sometimes those goals are at the cost of other things that I haven't considered. So I'm trying this year to have a question and an intention and one concrete goal. So my intention for 2021 is to provide as much value as possible to you guys and to anyone watching or reading or consuming or hanging out with me on a Twitch stream. I want to provide as much value as I can. Now my question for 2021 is what is skill and what is luck? This is very personal to me, but you get the idea. I would also implore you to try to see if there's a question that you would like to investigate that doesn't really have a definitive goal or habit, but just something that you're curious about learning and investigating throughout the year. And my one concrete goal is to learn a new language. And that I'll talk about next week. So please let me know in the comments down below what type of questions, intentions, goals, or habits resonated with you or what you're planning on doing. And I'm very excited for this year. A lot of things are up in the air and very uncertain and the world is in some type of chaos, but we can still do it. And we can choose what we're going to put our limited attention on. I'm so happy and so grateful that you took the time to watch this video until the end. You are a rare, great person. See you next week. Bye.